All right, comparators. A comparator is basically a device that takes, uh, that monitors two different voltages, holds one as a reference, and the other one varies. And when it goes past that reference voltage in either direction, the output will indicate the change. Uh, most of the time, you see op-amp comparators, which is basically, now if you don't know what an op-amp is, you can look it up, but it's effectively a versatile amplifier that's used uh, for many types of analog signal manipulation, but basically they have really high gain inside, and you can use them as a comparator because if you put in a voltage, it's going to shoot up the output right into the rail. So if you set one as a reference voltage, as from like a voltage divider or some known value, and then you input perhaps a varying voltage, the output will swing when it crosses that reference. Now there's basically two types. You've got non-inverting and you've got inverting. And uh, it just basically depends on which inputs you use for which uh, the reference or the input voltage. Now, unlike other op-amp circuits, you can operate these op-amps without split supplies. You can use single supplies, which is quite handy. Uh, this is a basic comparator circuit where you have two potentiometers feeding two different voltages to each pin and when those voltages change either way it'll turn the LED on and off. Now the very high loop gain like I said these have very high gain inside without any feedback and that's what causes the snap kind of on off action. Um, and I'm using a 741 in this circuit, but I mean today by today's standards that's a pretty garbage op amp, but it'll work just fine in this case for demonstration purposes. You can use any op amp. So basically what you see here is instead of two potentiometers, I just have a light dependent resistor and a potentiometer on the other input. So when I turn the pot, it kills the LED or if I cover the light dependent resistor, it also turns off the LED. So you can use this circuit as like a, sort of an on off indicator for like a sensor input of some kind. And of course, this device right here is a transistor. It's basically buffering the output of the op amp. The op amp may not, depending on the op amp, may not be able to drive the LED directly with enough current, but a transistor can surely source enough current to drive it to a level to where it's, you can see it. Now, of course, they make uh, comparator op amps that are specifically designed for this type of thing, like the LM339, I'm sure there's many others. Um, basically, they're, they're designed to not run with uh, a closed loop, and they're designed without a very uh, complex output stage. So you get, the whole thing is just much faster and the switching is a lot cleaner. Um, like the LM339 requires a pull-up resistor, just a, probably a 10K resistor, or actually it depends on the current you're running to go to VCC, just to even operate the thing. This is just a single transistor as the output. Now a Schmidt trigger, now if you've ever heard of this before, it's basically a advanced kind of version of a comparator where it basically uses positive feedback around the op amp and it creates this sort of like hysteresis curve where it like snaps the output up or snaps it down depending on a voltage that's applied and depending on the ratio of these two resistors you can control where it snaps up and down and uh, they have these like in they've like multiple Schmidt triggers in, in chips like there's like 14 or 16 pin dual inline package chips that hold a bunch of these and they're used in like logic circuits because of their ability to clean up a signal. Now a window comparator is basically two comparators back to back where they're operating together to create uh, a window where you have two reference voltages, a low and a high, and you can adjust those and set a window and when the window is met the output will change. And of course, you can set the voltage reference by either a potentiometer or a voltage divider, which of course is kind of the same thing. 
Now to make this a little practical, or a practical application of this, uh, we can take this, take this window comparator thing that will drive two LEDs when it's at the top and bottom, but in the middle it will drive this other LED here when both of these are off. Uh, these diodes here will help turn the transistor off so that when this, this transistor here will be on when these two are, if any of these two are on, it will turn on the transistor shunting out the LED. So if you take out these three potentiometers here and instead replace it with a voltage reference divider and a variable resistor feeding a capacitor, now you have a timed circuit. And there's a push button switch there. You have a timed circuit, uh, basically a three-step sequencer. You can control when each of these goes, little one, two, three, and you can control how long it goes for the sequence. All right, here's the sequencer on the breadboard here. We've got the 1458 op amp, uh, the transistor, and of course all the LEDs. We have a one mega ohm potentiometer, and if I press the switch, it just goes through each LED, and then it hangs on the last one there. And of course I can adjust the time. I can turn the time all the way down. It just goes really fast, and if I bring it up a bit, it's a little slower. And they'll go up. So if I bring this all the way up, it's like absurdly slow. I actually reduced the size of the capacitor from 100 microfarad down to 10 microfarad because I wanted this thing to go for seconds, not minutes. And of course, you can play with these resistor values here in the divider in order to get uh, delay times that vary between the steps as well. So it's a pretty simple way to make effectively a timed sequence with only an op amp and a few other components. Um, and with this particular circuit as well, I ended up adding a diode between the 10K and these other two diodes on this transistor because what was happening is, at least at nine volts, if you went higher voltage, it, wouldn't, it, would, it would work properly. But basically, it wouldn't, this transistor here would not turn off and so this LED would not light up. If I drop the voltage a little bit, I bet I can get this effect. See, the transistor will not turn off completely. And without that diode there, you had to have at least maybe 11 or 12 volts across this thing to actually get this LED to turn on. So when you build a circuit like this, just be prepared to play with it a little bit before you make a permanent version.